This is the third lecture from Chapter 14, all about kinetics, rates of reactions. And this lecture will focus on integrated rate laws. The rate law we talked about in the last lecture was called the differential rate law. And that was the rate law that had a generic form like this. It was rate equals rate constant times concentration of reactant raised to some power. But the differential rate law was basically looked at rate as a function of concentration. But nowhere was there any consideration of time in the differential rate law. Um, all of the rates to, um, for the differential rate law were measured, they were called initial rates, right in the very beginning of the reaction. And so there really wasn't any information about elapsing of time and what that did to rate or concentrations. So the integrated rate law is literally, from a calculus point of view, integrating the differential rate laws and then rearranging them a bit so that they take the form of a line. So forever we have been taught that the expression for a linear relationship is y equals mx plus b. So if you look at the integrated rate laws, they all have that form. So what's on the left side of the equal sign is appears on the y-axis if you were to graph the integrated rate law. Um, on the x-axis is small t, which is time in all cases. The slope uh, would be the rate constant and the inner y-intercept right here. So there are a lot of graphs involved when we get about, um, start working with integrated rate laws. So let's take a look some of the graphs. Um, just to back up for a moment with the differential rate law again. Um, the differential rate law looks at rate as a function of concentration and hopefully it's sinking in at this point that if it's a zero order reaction that means that concentration has no effect on the rate. So we've got a flat line. Um, if it's a first-order reaction, that means there is a direct relationship between concentration and rate, okay? So one-to-one -one linear direct relationship. And a second-order reaction, um, plotted rate versus concentration, is an exponential relationship. So again, no place in a plot when you're talking about differential rate laws is there any um, variable of time. On the other hand, if we look now at integrated rate laws, you can see that what's on the y-axis depends on the order of reaction. So if we were plotting differential rate laws, what was on the y-axis is rate, always. It's different here. And what's on the x-axis stays the same, it's time. Okay, so we're basically looking at how the concentration changes over time, but there's a little twist in it. For a zero-order reaction, in order to get a linear relationship, we have to plot simply the concentration of the reactant on the y-axis. For a first-order reaction, in order to get a straight line, we must plot natural log of the concentration. Remember that these are all of the form, y equals mx plus b. So that would be y in this case. So for a first order reaction, if you plotted, if you didn't plot the natural log of the concentration, you only plotted concentration. If it was a first order reaction, you'd get some, something like that. It'd be a curved line, okay? Or second order would. So this is how um, chemists use the data they get. They monitor the concentration of a reaction as a function of time. And if they plot simply concentration versus time and get a straight line, they know it's zero order. If they get a curved line, then they go ahead and plot natural log of the concentration. If that gives a straight line, it's first order. If they still don't have a straight line, then they will plot one over concentration of the reactant versus time. Um, so uh, I, you won't have to make these graphs yourself, but you'll certainly have to interpret them. 
So let's look at each of the common orders of reactions in a bit more detail as far as a integrated rate law goes. So again, if you were to write the generic differential rate law for zero order, this should be an exponent. So as we know, it, any um, variable that has zero as an exponent is equal to one. So for a zero order reaction, the rate of reaction simply equals the rate constant. So integrating the differential rate law, we get something that looks like that for the zero order. And again, in order to get a straight line, you would simply plot the concentration of the reactant versus time. Notice what the slope is. They're the same for two of these orders and different for one of them. But for zero order, the slope is minus k. So if I gave you a graph like this and I said, what's k? How would you do that? You would measure the slope, okay, rise over run. And let's just say you came up with um, a value of minus 50, okay. That would be slope. And so how would you find k from that? Okay, you just take the minus of that. All righty. On all right, so for first order reaction, again, just comparing the two rate laws, the differential rate law, and all of these, I'm noticing these exponents didn't come through as exponents. Um, so that's what a differential rate law looks like. Uh, the integrated rate law for first order is full of natural logs. So again, in order to get a straight line, if you have a first order reaction, you would have to plot natural log of concentration of the reactant over time. So let's say you had a bunch of data, concentration of A, a whole table of data versus at different times. And you had all sorts of data. Okay. And I said, all right, is this zero order, first order, or second order? What would you do? Well, as I said before, first you would make a, a plot of simply concentration versus time. If it's a straight line, you'd, you'd be done. Say, so, okay, it's zero order. It's not a straight line. It's a curve. So you have to go to the next step, and that's plot the natural log of the concentrations versus time. In this case, that gave us a straight line. So that tells us, okay, that's first order. I apologize for the... My symbol's not carrying over. I will have to double check. Um, it looks like these boxes are supposed to be arrows showing a chemical reaction. So basically, you have sucrose reacting with water to yield glucose and fructose. Um, I tell you that the reaction is first order. I give you the rate constant. The units of rate constant are very, very important. Um, and when you do enough of them, you'll probably come to memorize them. But units for a first order rate constant are always s to the minus 1, which of course is the same <coughs> as 1 over s. Sorry about that. So the hint here is, if you're reading a problem, how do you know that it's an integrated rate law problem? Any time a problem mentions time in it, Okay, in this case, two hours, it's an integrated rate law. Okay, So if it asks you how much time has passed or what happens to the concentration over a certain period of time, that's the integrated rate law. It told you it was first order, so now you have to remember what the integrated rate law is. So the integrated rate law for a first order reaction is natural log of the concentration at time t equals minus rate constant times whatever time you're interested in, plus natural log of the concentration at time zero. That means at the beginning, the initial concentration. So this problem gave you all the information you need. You just plug it in. So the problem told us that the rate constant is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5. It told us that two hours had passed, you've got to pay attention to units. Notice that the units for the rate constant are seconds. So you need to change this hour to seconds. There are 
3,600 seconds in one hour. So that gives us 7,200 seconds. Okay. Then the natural log of the original concentration, which of course they gave you as 0 0.40. Um, go ahead and simplify this reaction. I would try to do that. If you didn't already try to do this in class, um, there were several people who were apparently entering it wrong into their calculator, so please practice before you get on a quiz or test. If you simplify this side of the reaction, you get minus 1.36. I warn you against rounding. I wouldn't round that to 1.4 even, because when you this value is an exponent, so what this actually is, is e raised to the minus 1.36. Since it represents an exponent, any tiny little change in that value is going to make a huge change in the ultimate number you get. Um, and you can prove that, self, that to yourself if you want. Plug in e raised to the minus 1.36 and then compare that to e raised to the minus 1.4. It's quite a big difference. Um, all right, so the final answer you should get is 0.26 molar. So here's a variation of that problem. Um, how long will it take? So it's asking you to solve for time for the same experiment. So we're still talking about a first-order reaction. Okay, and in this case, they're saying that the concentration at time t is 0 0.30 molar. All right. Equals. Let's see, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5 is k. And we are solving for T. And then I'm running a room. Plus the end of this equation, plus the natural log of the concentration at time zero, the initial concentration, which was given in the first part of the problem on the last page. All righty. So now let's go ahead and start simplifying this. And honestly, I think that's where most of the mistakes occur, is getting this math done without making a silly error along the way. So make yourself practice punching this into your calculator, okay? So the natural log of 0.3 is minus 1.204. I'm not going to round very much. Um, and equals minus 6. 2 times 10 to the minus 5t, okay, and the natural log of 0.4 is minus 0.9163. All right, so to simplify this equation, you need to add 0.9163 to both sides. And when we do that, we get, let's see, minus 0.2877 equals, I'm going to need to get another page, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5t. All right, I'm going to put another page up. Divide. All right. So here's what we have so far. So now to solve for t, we need to divide both sides by 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5. Excuse me, by minus 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, and when we do that, we get that T equals 4,640. Now it's in units of seconds. So if the problem were to ask you for minutes or hours, you would have to convert it. 
All right, and finally, a little, just to mention second order integrated rate law again, um, was one over the concentration of the reactant at time t equals k times t plus one over concentration of reactant at the initial time. Um, so if it's a second order reaction, if you plot one over the concentration times time, you will get a positively sloping line where the slope is equal to the rate constant. This is an awesome slide, and if I were you, I would probably print it out. Um, it has the order of reaction to the left, the differential rate law, the units that go with the rate constant for that order, the integrated rate law in different forms, just rearranged mathematically, the graph that you would need to plot for the integrated rate law in order to get a straight line, and something that we'll learn very briefly, a little bit about radioactive reactions and half-life expressions. So this is a very, very handy um, slide to print out, put in your binder. And that is it for this third lecture from Kinetics Chapter.